Today we're going back to the southern border, because the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Or in this case, 15,000 troops and a light peppering of tear gas. Last week, rather than producing content, I participated in the Mackey family tradition of arguing until the turkey meat kicks in and we all fall asleep. I just watched as things went crazy down there. As the caravan finally arrived, they were treated a little worse than the last high profile set of immigrants that arrived around Thanksgiving. Fool us once. Trump's asylum man was shot down by a circuit court judge, leading to a series of events culminating with the chief justice calling him out for implying judges or partisan, and now we've closed one border for a while on Sunday. Immigrants are throwing rocks and we're pepper spraying people. Although, as one poorly worded Fox News person defended it, The type of deterrent being used is OC pepper spray. It's literally water, pepper, with a small amount of uh, alcohol for evaporation purposes. It's natural. You could actually put it on your nachos and eat it. Yeah, it's organic, non-GMO, farm to eyeball. No preservatives, sugar-free. In fact, the Reagan administration tried to get it classified as a vegetable in school lunches. The question I'm trying to answer today is just, wait, what? Now, more specifically, asylum's current status, the legality of shutting down the border, and if you thought shutting down the border was bad, how all of this could shut down the government in a few weeks. Because in recent years, the federal government has been shutting down more times than Pirate Bay. And it looks like that's gonna happen again. So let's get started with asylum claims. Most of you have heard. Well, a federal judge in San Francisco has ruled that President Trump cannot deny asylum to immigrants who cross the border illegally. Okay, first big misconception. This was an asylum ban in the same way Michael Bloomberg saying you can't sell outdoor swimming pool sized cups of coke is a soda ban. It simply said that all asylum claims have to come from a port of entry and that illegal immigrants couldn't apply for asylum once they were in the country. Wow, that's a little more reasonable than I'm sure some of you were expecting. So why was it voted down? Well, because he was an Obama judge and all Obama appointed judges signed a loyalty oath to destroy anything Trump touches. Well, either that, or we currently have a law cited in the court's opinion from 1979's Immigration and Naturalization Act that reads, an alien who is physically present in the United States or who arrives in the United States irrespective of such alien status may apply for asylum. Wow, like that law or not, there's not much room for interpretation. Or maybe, you know, a little bit of A, a little bit of BS. So, to sum up the current legal status of asylum applications, you can either apply from ports of entry or once you enter the United States, either through legal or illegal means. That really contextualizes. And tensions at the U.S. border with Mexico as some Central American migrants try to breach the crossing between Tijuana and California, all in a bid to pressure the U.S. to hear their asylum claims. I entered this episode expecting something so much simpler. Alright, so here's the issue. What the Trump administration planned to do was make it so you could only apply for asylum from ports of entries and slow down service to those ports of entries to the point where my bank's customer service would seem tolerable by comparison. What's the latest on, uh, on this group of people and how many are being allowed into the United States to apply for asylum? As you said, there were eight last night, and at about noon local time in Tijuana, they let in about six more. So it's a trickle of the uh, asylum claimants that they're allowing into the port of entry right there. It seems as though my apartment's elevator has a larger capacity than America's main immigration office. Now, this strategy is totally legal, but hinges on the fact that if you bum rush the border, you won't have the option of claiming asylum if you get to the other side, something that is now not the case. Can we get a video of the reaction to that ruling? U.S. Customs and Border Control commissioners said more than 1,000 migrants tried to storm the border on Sunday. Mexico's government said it was about 500. So far in researching and writing this episode, I think I might have raised more questions than I answered. Because the law is really hard. So the United States now has a two-pronged approach. 
have the slowest and most inefficient asylum systems in the world, a task that we've been preparing for for years, and making sure that nobody can cross the border and legally claim asylum in the U.S. This is why you're seeing things like... It's a major contrast to the chaos on Sunday when agents deploy tear gas and rubber bullets to turn the Central American migrants away. Yes, we're back to talking about weaponizing that man's favorite nacho topping. Do we have any other funny quotes about the use of tear gas on Sunday? I'll take stupid Donald Trump quotes for 500, Alex. It's very safe. The ones that were suffering to a certain extent were the people that were putting it out there. Our stable genius president at work. You know who the real victims of the tear gas were? The people who released it. And nobody ever sympathizes with murderers anymore. I mean, gunshots are really loud, and that recoil really does a number on your shoulder. Now, beyond the pretty hilarious defenses of using tear gas, this is not even close to unprecedented in dispersing crowds trying to rush the border. In fact, the Customs and Border Patrol said its personnel have been using tear gas since 2010, deploying the substance a total of 126 times since the fiscal year of 2012. It's the holiday season. Who am I to question tradition? So we have this Central American caravan submitting asylum claims through an intentionally bureaucratic process, and unable to illegally cross into the United States because laws. I feel like there's one group I haven't mentioned yet. Tijuana's mayor is calling this a humanitarian crisis. U.S. authorities are processing less than 100 asylum applications a day. So this is a backlog with no end in sight. Somehow Tijuana just found a way to become even less of a tourist attraction. There are more than 5,000 people with absolutely nowhere to go just waiting for a chance to file asylum. Here's the silver lining, if you can call it a silver lining. I mean, to some, it's as much a victory as an atheist finding proof there's no God. Haha, <laughs> life is cosmically meaningless. I knew it. The strategy seems to be working, with refugees losing hope of getting asylum in the U.S. and either beginning to return home or look for opportunities in Mexico. So, victory? Now to the future, because there are two glaring things making the border incredibly relevant to today. First, President Trump says he could force a government shutdown if Congress doesn't fund his wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. That was not from a year ago. That was from four days ago. And when is the budget due that if the House and Senate don't agree will result in a government shutdown? December 8th. Hey, that's next Saturday. So that's gonna happen. Government employees don't get too comfortable because you're gonna have a second Thanksgiving break right around the corner. And this one might last a while. The current situation, as you can probably imagine, is pretty relevant to a potential wall-based government shutdown. Because, well, in about a week, House Democrats are probably going to have to start talking about how bad wall funding is. And with more than 5,000 migrants just south of the border looking to potentially illegally cross over and then legally file asylum claims from inside our borders, well, I think you can imagine that the optics are not going to be great on that one. The other issue is... On this Thanksgiving Day, President Trump is talking tough about the border. At Mar-a-Lago today, issuing an unprecedented threat to shut down the whole border if Mexico loses control of the migrants arriving there. Shut down the whole border? Well, the border's part of the government, so you might be killing two birds with one stone just in the government zone. So before we talk about whether he can do this, what does shutting down the border mean? We did see Trump shut down the San Ysidro port of entry on Saturday, so we can get a little sample of what this would look like. The U.S. Customs and Border Patrol has shut down pedestrian and vehicular traffic at the largest border checkpoint between San Diego and Tijuana. As you can imagine, shutting down a port of entry isn't exactly a fun surprise. Although it was a solid excuse for many American citizens who commute from Mexico to the U.S. to go to work every day to call in sick. It also really messed with inter-country commerce. But hey, if you're not married to that whole we should be importing less from China idea, go ahead and start messing with Mexican supply lines. The main thing this did though was lead to just a political cartoon sized traffic jam. 
and essentially shut down the town of San Ysidro for a day, costing $5.3 million to local businesses. The people who were waiting to get across were just stuck. Some of them getting out of their cars and standing on the road. These are people who cross every day. U.S. citizens who live in Tijuana or people with visas coming to the U.S. for their jobs each day. None of them were being allowed in. To be fair, somewhere between 1,000 and 500 people were rushing the border near that point of entry during that time. So it wasn't like he did this because he hadn't heard his name in the news for a few hours and he wanted to make sure he still existed. Now, shutting down the southern border isn't exactly an unprecedented move either. The most high profile time it was done it was when Nixon, for three weeks, severely tightened all ports of entry to our southern border to force the hand of Mexican authorities to work with us on a war against drugs. Here's a famous California governor coming out in support of this action called Operation Intercept. The economic hardship to some and the inconvenience to travelers cannot be balanced on the same scale with shattered lives, heartbroken families, and the astronomical cost of courts, judges, juvenile facilities, law enforcement agencies, and the rehabilitation and treatment costs required to treat the addicted. That all sounds reasonable, but if you listen just a little more claims uh, that marijuana uh, is not uh, uh, harmful or dangerous. Yeah, this was largely to solve a weed problem, which I'm personally not an advocate either way on. But you're telling me that this guy... In a hilarious new Hollywood movie called Bedtime for Bonzo, starring Ronald Reagan, Diana Lynn, and Bonzo, <laughs> that amazing chimp. <laughs> Wasn't showing up on set with bloodshot eyes at least once? Over the next three weeks, we saw a worsening of situations on both sides of the border. The intent was to make the operation so painful on Mexico that they increased their fight against marijuana. And it worked at a cost to commerce. After three weeks, it led to Operation Cooperate, which come on, Nixon. I know you had other things on your mind at the time, but Operation Cooperation, it's right there. Mexico really did more to fight marijuana, and we have not had a pot problem since. George Bush temporarily did a similar thing after 9-11, requiring thorough inspections for every car and pedestrian, leading to days-long waits, and Reagan did it after a DEA agent was murdered in Mexico. It'll be a little weirder if Trump does it though, because... Well, we just signed a comprehensive trade deal with them less than three months ago and made a pretty big deal about it. So until the next big border story happens, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Or do it the old school way by clicking on the subscription button below. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and remember to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.